Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 499, Apple Phone Health Heart Can Save Your Life. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. So there's an app on our phones that comes with, everybody has an Apple phone, has this app automatically built into it. Mm -hmm. And many people have not ever looked at it or taken the time to look at it to see what it does. They may flip through it and go, oh, it's just something Apple put on here. But you say that medically it's a, a, a process that people can use to save their lives in times of medical crisis. And especially Mm -hmm. as we are coming through this coronavirus crisis around the country, a lot of older people are suddenly finding themselves in emergency rooms. Mm -hmm. They can't breathe, they can't talk, and they can't give full-fledged information about their Mm -hmm. health history, their medicines, their conditions, what have you. But if they have an Apple phone, they can enter this data at their leisure at home. Mm -hmm. And today we're gonna talk about how they do that and what they need to put in there. Because first responders, if if you're in a car accident or Mm -hmm. if you pass out on the road, Mm -hmm. uh, or at your favorite bar, wherever the heck you might pass out, they can pick up your phone and get into it. Even if you have it security coded, Mm -hmm. they can get to this app, which has emergency medical information that they can then use to save your life, to transport you, to contact people that know you, to say, here's this person that we found, they're in trouble and we're taking care of them. When I was, when I, you know, we all work the emergency room. When we go through medical school, then residency, then periodically when patients would have problems, I even was called to things like somebody had a smashed pelvis. They're in the ER. They're out of, they're unconscious. They, you know, and I had to find out what their, their background was. Had they, had they had kids? Had they had other injuries? Had they, had they had kidney disease? You know, these are things we need to know. We need to know your allergies. And nobody wears allergy bracelets anymore. So or drug overdoses. Yeah, we need to know your drug, the drugs that you're on, or the drugs that you can't take. We need to we need to know who to call. This this app actually, when the SOS goes out, when the emergency people hit the hit hit a specific button, SOS goes out to the people that you designate to be the people you want called if you're in an emergency. So it'll go out automatically. I did not know that. And that's pretty cool. So Apple has thought about this, which is kind of amazing that they put this in here and then not discuss it with anybody. This is this can save your life. So if you're in an auto accident and you're completely out of it, they can find your phone and they can open this up with this. It doesn't take a special code. It's the only thing that opens up without a special code. And we're going to show you how to go through that and what information to put in it so that you can save your own life if this happens and I have to tell you it's hard to it's hard to get people to do this it takes I don't know if you're healthy it may take 15 minutes if it's if you're not healthy takes longer it's gonna take longer but here's how you're gonna save time this also works when you go to the doctor and they say well what drugs are you on what supplements are you on what uh, what's your blood type when did you last get your vaccine I mean you can enter all this stuff in there like people get tetanus shots yeah tetanus shots they don't need the tetanus shot they just got one but they don't remember and you can write your immunizations on here right you can even write your blood type if you need blood then they'll know your blood type before they have to wait for the lab to get it or if you just had a cat scan they know you just had a cat scan they can compare them i mean this makes your medical care so much better it is shocking how much this can do and the same app allows you to send an sos to all the people that you've designated it does it automatically when the first responders open it up they have a way to send the SOS by opening it up okay to to oh, okay. your contacts yeah so my wife or my son would get a call saying hey we're taking to the hospital or what is it right we're taking the and which hospital yeah so they can send the SOS out for wow. you so this is interestingly enough it also you can also take pictures of the pages of your advanced directive for I want to be on a respirator I don't want to be on a right. respirator That's these so are the conditions right these are the people who can decide if I'm going to be on a respirator 
you can put that into your phone as well. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have an advanced directive in this time of crisis and pandemic, you need one. And in Missouri, the Missouri Depart uh, Missouri Bar Association has a website that can, um, I think it's M MBA, Missouri Bar Association, and you can go to .org, you can go there and write your own advanced directive, fill it out. All you have to do is get it notarized. It's mobar.org. No, mobar. Thank you, mobar.org. Yeah. And that they 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 may be one of the few states that has made it such that people can do their own advanced directive, right. which I think is extremely helpful. Dudley McCarter, our friend Dudley McCarter, yeah. is the one that did that. Really, he Good made for it Dudley. easily easy for all the people in Missouri to have their own advanced directive. But you have to have the paper. When your family comes, you have to have that on paper. Mm -hmm. But they should see it mm -hmm. so they can make some decisions. Preliminary so, emergency decisions. Right. Um, and, and I've been reading throughout this coronavirus crisis, medical doctors, hospital uh, ER specialists who are saying we are getting so many elderly people here who haven't even talked about this. And if we put them on a ventilator and their system starts to fail, heart, kidneys, lungs, mm -hmm. uh, we need to make a decision, but we can't talk to them and they haven't talked to their family, so we don't have any directives. So they get put they, on a respirator. And they may not get what they want. And so they're saying, you need to talk to your family members, people that are important to you, that are close to you, and tell them what you want done in given circumstances. Write it down, this mobar.org. Uh, We'll give you the forms that you need if you don't already have them. You fill those out, sign them, and then leave copies at home, tell people where they are, so that if you are ever taken to the emergency room, you can bring that paperwork in, and then the hospital can legally do what you have asked be done, or not be done, uh, depending on the conditions of your life. And let, let, me, let me make you feel a little better. It doesn't mean you can't be put on a respirator for anything. Right. If generally you get to choose or say, I only want to be put on a respirator if I have if I'm brain dead. I you know if I if I have no brain function. I, I or, don't want to be put on a respirator yeah, if I'm brain dead. Right. I don't want to be put on a yeah. respirator if I'm brain dead, or I want to be taken off if I was put on one. Right. If I don't have any brain waves. Terminate that. So generally, it's not that you can't get a respirator for something that is reversible. That's not what it says, mm -hmm. and you can specify. Okay. So I've been on a respirator. It's no treat, but I'm glad they put me on it, and I'm glad I got off of it. There, I uh, was listening to a doctor talk the other day about a, a person that he had was in his 80s. His lungs were failing. His kidneys were failing. Uh, something else was failing, and the doctor needed to tell the family, you know, this guy's dying, and we're not going to be able to stop it, but he's on the respirator, so mm -hmm. we can keep him going for a while. What do you want done? But, but the man had to die alone. His family couldn't be in the room with him. Uh, and oh, because they had, of in the, because the virus? of the coronavirus, exactly. And so he said, "My hands are tied. I can't unplug anything without documentation and permission mm -hmm. from the family." Mm -hmm. uh, and they didn't have it. They never talked about it with Grandpa, you know. And well, you you need to and and every copy that you give to your kids or to your friend who's a doctor or whoever. Right has to be notarized. So you have to bring in all the copies that you filled out and everybody signed and have it no and it has to be notarized by somebody. I mean they do it don't they do it at the post office? I mean we have our own notary. I don't know. But um but there's notaries banks at usually every business yeah. and banks. So it may be a small cost but still this could determine whether you're not in limbo because that's a different word for some people. But I mean not able to think but still kept alive if you don't want to be. Well, and then the, the big question, it's a judgment question for the physicians is, can this person come back to mm -hmm. normal quality of life? And you have a right to say, if I can't have a normal quality of life, I don't want uh, extreme measures taken uh, mm -hmm. to maintain my body. Uh, if you do want that, you have a right to say, I'll do everything you can do. I want to stay here as long as I can, no matter what the conditions are. Mm -hmm. But you have that legal right. You can offer that legal right to certain people that you designate if and you they can speak the for you if you're unable to speak for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and we recommend that you do that. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the advanced medical directives uh, are things that you need to fill out. Check with your state's um, 
Bar Association and see if they've done what Missouri has done because that was way, that was ahead of anybody else. That's probably been 10, 15 years, yeah. but maybe every state has that. Their Bar Association may offer that. But, but this is the way we wanted to um, encourage you to do this. I mean, there's a couple other things that's, that are on there that mm -hmm. we're going to go through, but um, basically you can have your blood type on there so you, so you can get a blood transfusion. You can also have your um, have your organ donation status there okay. because if you are an organ donor it may be on your license your license may be smeared maybe in wallet, burned, in somewhere. yeah somewhere yeah. else and so at least most people have their phones with them at all times and so that will have your organ donation status on there so mm. that someone can use your organs if it while you, when you pass away so so that's important um but i wanted to walk through what you do first so we're going to put up on the screen my phone my apps on my front page and i always want this on the front page so they don't have to go looking through 300 apps to get it so it should be on the front with your texts and phone so that should it's a, a white box like what you're shown with a red heart in it you hit that and i have to actually when i don't have my phone in front of me i have to actually go through this so you hit you hit the app with the heart, it goes to something that's called browse, and and you have and it has your picture or your initials up on the right hand corner. Right hand, your right hand is over here, and um, you touch the picture or your initials. When you touch that, it opens up something with your name on it. You you have health profile, medical ID, organ donation. So health profile, you touch that. And under the health profile, basically, it's your contact information. Mm -hmm. It's your name, your birth date, your sex, your blood type, what type of skin you have, which is kind of weird. Like um, if you have type 1, like really pale, or if you're black, then you have type 6. Um, I'm a type 4, whether you need a wheelchair or not. I'm not sure how that got in there. Anyway, so when you're done with that, you go back, you go back to this initial screen and then you hit or you touch a medical ID and that's where most of the information is and in your medical ID uh, is your birth date your age they figure your age and if you're an organ donate donator at the top then it says medical conditions you should fill that in with every medical condition that you have and I filled it in with my medical conditions and the medication I take for it then um, the next category should be your, oh, I didn't print all that, should be your uh, medications, fill in medications, fill in your allergies, fill supplements in and dosages. supplements and dosages of everything, uh, your doctor's name, your doctor's phone contact number. Contact information. Mm -hmm. And all of that should be filled in. Then it asks for contacts that you want to have, you want to have called okay. when, if, you, if you have an SOS. So those are entered in there. So all anything you want them to know, I put my immunizations in because I forget how long ago I had my tetanus or my measles, mumps, rubella, or you know, because you have to have boosters on all those. So I use this to go back and go, oh yeah, I already had my tetanus. You know, that saves you a tetanus shot when you go to when you go to right. the hospital too, right. because they always give you one if you can't remember. Well, like my wife is allergic to tetanus, right? So if she's unconscious and they think, oh, let's give her a tetanus shot. That could really create a problem, right? If they don't have that information, so allergies that you're are really important. To, absolutely. So, um, and you could also write a note on there where you have, you can write where you have your advanced directive, where you've kept it, oh, in your or home. if it's yeah. scanned onto or your, your lawyer's phone. office or wherever right. it is, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and then, then you go back, back to that front page that has the three different um, categories, and then you go to organ donation, and you decide whether you want to or donate your organs, and mm -hmm. then you fill that out, and it has it on there. Um, for some hospital records, you can actually go to the hospital and use this to get your hospital records transferred to your phone. Hmm. Now, I've never done that. I don't have hospital records in the last 10 years, right. thankfully. So um, basically, that's it, and then you've got all your information. If you're not sick and you don't have a lot of problems, then... This doesn't take much time, but if you're on multiple medications or if you have multiple problems, then this so you, might take a while. You say when you 
if you decide that you want to be an organ donor, you put on that you want mm -hmm. to be an organ donor, but you can also in that same section of the screen, mm -hmm. register with an organ donation company. Right. So they will be notified that there's a possibility of available organs. Right. Should that become the case. Mm -hmm. And, Not and because it saves I, I, time. honestly, when they know when they know that yeah. they're going to turn the respirator off, that's about when they yeah they decide. But then it's they, not like this will not make them turn your respirator off. Yeah, that's the fear of everybody. Oh, a lot of people turn my they're going to take yeah because they want to harvest my organs while they're still in good shape. Honestly, if you're over fifty, they really don't want them. <laughs> but I still put them in there because you could. They may need your my like my mother had got lenses for her cataracts from right. um, from a donor. Right. So and now they have. They have lenses they make, right. so they're not from a donor, but they have other things that they can they can use from from human beings. So it's helpful for other people, and you can feel good about promising that if you're if you are in that situation, I, something I, good would come out of it. As a counselor, talked to a number of people who had relatives die, especially younger relatives die, unexpectedly, who were organ donors, and they took real comfort from the fact that parts of that individual lived on mm -hmm. and saved other lives. That's right. So they, they were able to reframe that as having some meaning in what felt like a meaningless circumstance. Right. You know. And that's and I think it's, and it did. It did. It helped save I, people's lives. I believe that. And it's very mm -hmm. important. And they believe that. And so I, I think that more of us should think about that. More of us should think about that. Depends on what you die up to. Yeah. Whether they can use them. So, get your iPhone out while you're sitting around the house and Best have sometime. everybody fill out your, their phones so that even if, if your teenager has a phone, you probably will have to fill it out for them. But, or a husband. You may have to right, as well. I'm probably going to have to finish with my husband's. <laughs> he barely put anything in. So, yeah. um, but, that's, but it's also important. Your doctor may just go, hey, just give me that list and mm. let me look at your, your meds. Saves you time there where... where his time, your time, but more time for you to ask questions, more time for you to be informed in that visit. You don't have to spend your time in a litany of medications and supplements. You have them right there. Well, it's just better to be prepared. You know, you always say hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. You mm -hmm. always have to have fallback plans to can handle contingencies and emergencies. And this is one that if you have an iPhone, is available on every iPhone for free. Now, if you don't have an iPhone, I don't know how the other, the Android systems work if, if they have a similar app, but they certainly should have, and you should look at your Android phone and see if these things are on there uh, under a different name. But the same and these concept. come with the phone. This yeah. isn't something you have to download. It's on the phone when you buy it. Yeah. So please do yourself a favor and do a favor for all of the emergency people and, and doctors and nurses who are taking care of you so that you get the best care possible and fill this out. And hopefully all of them know to just hit the button and get your medical information. Be well. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.